Hello, here is Ali Talabi. Welcome back. This is our module seven, and we're going just to wrap up this module. I'm going to review some major notes, and then we'll look at a few uh, questions, and I will provide you the answer. Now, so the first note is regarding DDM, dividend discount model. So we talk about the DDM or the Gordon formula. I mentioned that uh, the formula is based on the dividend, the gross rate, and the discount rate. The question here is, is it possible to have the negative gross rate? And the answer is yes. As long as R is greater than G, uh, you can use the formula. So uh, the R might be 10%, G 5%, R 5%, G minus 2%, doesn't matter. Still, you can use the formula, and that's totally fine. So just make sure the R is greater than G. Uh, the next point is regarding the dividend. So we use the Gordon formula or DDM as uh, when the, you have a dividend and we are assuming the dividend is growing at the constant rate. So there should be a dividend payment in this case. And remember, we are using the D1, not D0 here. And D1 here, it means D0 times one plus a G. So you are using the dividend one year from now. So as I mentioned, you have to distinguish between uh, D0 and D1. D1 is based on the gross rate from one period or one year from now. Uh, we also talk about the specific version of the DDM in which uh, we have you're having non-constant gross rate. So in some specific years, uh, the gross rate is super normal. After a few years, you are getting back to the normal gross rate. And remember, when you are uh, going to find the present value uh, of all these dividends, you are using the discount rate. So don't use the gross rate when you are discounting uh, all these dividends. You have to use R, uh, not the G or the super normal uh, gross rate uh, in this case. And we also talk about the uh, intrinsic value. Our goal here is, uh, our goal in the fundamental analysis is to find the intrinsic value or true value of this stock. So this true value might be different than the market value. So if uh, the market value is greater than the true value, we're saying the stock is overpriced or overvalued. If the market price is less than the intrinsic or true value, the stock is undervalued or it's underpriced. And also, we talk about the market uh, efficiency. And if you are, uh, if you believe in market efficiency, even the weak form uh, using technical analysis is kind of uh, useless because in technical analysis we are mainly using. Uh, the historical price, historical volume and transaction. And based on the big form of efficiency, all those information are already reflected in the stock uh, price. Now let's look at the, a few questions. Let's start with the first question. So uh, in the first question, we're saying the company is paying the dividend of uh, $3 right now. So your D no is uh, $3. That's the, uh, the current dividend payment. And the, uh, the stock is selling at $43. So that's the selling price. The discount rate or appropriate required return here is 13%. Uh, and we are looking for the G. The idea here is as long as you have three of these variables, D1, GR, you can find the fourth one, P0, for example. So it doesn't matter. You're looking for which variable in this formula. Here, I'm looking for G. So what can I do? I can just plug the numbers and I can find the G. Just the only tricky point here is the D0 is given, uh, not the D1, but still we can use the formula to find because the only missing variable here is G. So let's do this. So uh, your P0 is $43. We don't have, as I mentioned, we don't have the D1. We have D0. So I use the D0 three times one plus G divided by what is your R is 13% minus G. So I can rearrange the formula to find it. So I just multiply 43 by 13.13 .13 minus G. So let's do this. So 43 times uh, 0.13, it gives me 559. 
So 559 minus uh, 43 G, it should be same as three times one plus G is three plus three G. Now on the both side of uh, equation, you will see we have G, so I can put all these G's on the left side or the right side, doesn't matter, just put on one side. So uh, I'm taking to the uh, left side, so it becomes minus, so it's minus 46G. And I'm taking uh, actually 559 to the left side that's uh, up the equation. So this becomes minus, so it's minus 2.59. And from here, the G becomes, so you have to divide 2.59 by uh, 46. So this gives me G as uh, 0 0.0563 or it's 5.63 percent. And if you look at the options you have, the closest one is 5.6 percent. So the answer should be B. So again, we use just the Gordon formula. I rearrange the formula to find actually the G and based on that, the G should be 5.6%. Now let, let's look at the next uh, question. So let's look at the second question. Here is saying the stock is selling at for $46. So the, the stock price is $46. And what else we have here? Uh, the required return here is 16%. 16% that's a required return and the next year dividend you have to be careful that's the next year so that's D1 it's three dollars ten cents uh, and uh, the company plans to reinvest 75% of its earnings back into the business so what does it mean it means the payout ratio is 25% or we can say the blowback ratio blowback ratio we also call that retention ratio. Pullback or retention is 75% or 0.75. So payout ratio is 25%, 75% that's the money which is left at the company. Now, based on this argument, we are looking for the uh, return on equity. Now, we, we know that when it comes to return on equity and pullback ratio, actually we use the formula to calculate the sustainable growth rate by multiplying the ROE uh, by the pullback or the retention ratio. In this case, to find the ROE, what can I do? I can divide the G by uh, pullback ratio. However, uh, I don't have the G, so I have to find it. I just have the pullback ratio, which is 0.75 or 75%. How can I find the G? To find the G, actually, I can use these numbers. And back to the DDM or dividend discount model, I can use the Gordon formula to find G. So if I just plug the numbers here, so it's $46, that's the price. The dividend here is $3.10 divided by 16% percent minus G. So again, I need to rearrange the formula. Uh, so let me do this. So it should be uh, 0.16 minus G 3.1 divided by 46. So let me use my calculator to find the G from here. So 3.1 divided by 46. So I'm looking for G, I'm taking G to the right side of the equation and taking this to the left side and I will get 9.26%. Uh, so my G becomes 9.26%. So that's the G again, I just found from this uh, equation and rearranging the formula and then I'm multiplying that by 75%. So if you divide it by 75%, you get uh, your RE at 12.3%. So 12.3%, that's your RE. So if you look at the option, you see first one is giving you 12.35%, which is the answer we're looking for. And that's how we found the RE. Now let's look at the last question, question uh, three. So this question, as you see, this is related to the non-constant growth rate. 
We mentioned in some cases that uh, their stock is growing, their stock dividend is growing with a super normal rate, and after uh, a few years, it goes back to the normal growth rate. Now, let's go with the timeline and see what we have here. It's saying the stock is expected to pay dividends of $2 and $2.20 in the next two years. Be careful, it's not saying from now, next two years. So one year from now, it should pay $2. Two years from now, it's paying two dollars twenty cents, and uh, and sell for a price of forty five dollars. So at the same time, when the company is paying dividend, by the end of year, you are selling the stock at forty five dollars. What is the uh, current price based on the uh, ten percent required uh, required return, which is your discount rate? Most of times when it comes to non-constant growth rate, you have to calculate this price. But you are lucky here because the selling price is already given uh, and you don't need to use the Gordon formula to find the, uh, the price or also called terminal value by the end of year two. So you can find the stock price by discounting all these cash flows. And what is the appropriate discount rate? As you see, that's the 10%. You are using 10% discount rate to find the present value. So you have $2. What is the present value of $2? You are right. So $2 divided by 1 plus discount rate. That's the present value of $2. So let me use my calculator. So 2 divided by 1.1. 1. 1. This gives you $1.82. Now, when it comes to the second year, you see you have two cash flows, 2.2 dividend and the selling price. Since both are happening uh, at the end of year two, you can add them and just find the present value of one number. So $2.20 plus 45, that's 47.20 divided by 1.1 to power of two. This is why, because you're talking about discounting back for two periods, which is 1.21. So I'm dividing 47.2 by 1.21, which gives me $39. So this is the present value of the cash flow you receive uh, two years from now. However, you already have the cash flow one year from now, so you need to add them all to find the present value of all these cash flows or the present value of all these dividends and the selling price. 39 plus $1.82, for sure it gives you $40.82. So the current price should be $40.82. And the closest number you have here is D. That's it for today. Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, following me. Uh, if you have any specific question, you can provide a question in the uh, comments section and I will provide my answer there. Uh, this is end of module seven. Talk to you soon with module eight. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.